11 Sports, and for the fans, welcomes you to the following presentation of the Simulation Football League. Jacksonville, Florida, the site of tonight's Simulation Football League action. Duval! Here we go for the action between Charleston and Jacksonville. Andy Hamilton along with Gerald Judicessi. Gerald, quite a battle between these two teams in the Atlantic Division. Yeah, this is going to be an amazing Atlantic Division battle here with uh, two teams Three and two with everybody in the division having a winning record. One of these teams are going to separate from that three and two pack. The fifth meeting between these two teams. Jacksonville has won every single one of them. And Charleston trying to come in and show that they can win in this battle. They've played three of those four battles here in Jacksonville. And the Kings are really the bullies in this in this relationship between the two. Gerald, what does Charleston have to do tonight to get the win? I think the keys to the game for Charleston is they have to get pressure on Christian Christensen. They've got to protect Drew from this unbelievable pairing of Hunter Norwood and Taquan Hale. And they have Buchanan Simons, who's having a really, really good year, averaging 19.9 yards, a catch of five touchdown second in the league in both categories they need that to open up the running game for Keith Berenger. Charleston's strength is their defense they have allowed the eighth least points per game uh, giving up around 23.2 Jacksonville's best strength also their defense they give up around 21 points per game that is fifth best in the simulation football league this season these teams both sit at three and two the winner potentially has some footing above the other in the Atlantic Division. Charleston wearing white, Jacksonville wearing purple. Ball on the tee. The Kings will start with the ball. Deep kick will be brought out of the end zone. Jacksonville's Mike St. Green will feel the electricity in the air tonight and return this one out to the 19. And, Gerald, that is where we will see... The big man, Christian Christensen, lead this offense out. He went 40 of 48 last week in the win over Atlanta. He has a lot of completions and a lot of attempts, but not a lot of yards. He was 40 of 48 for 271 yards only, one touchdown and one pick. Their win against Atlanta. Third in the league in completion percentage this year. He flips it out to Jared Willis for the first play from scrimmage. It's a completion for a two-yard pickup, and Jacksonville has to keep, or excuse me, Charleston has to keep Jared Willis's name on their lips. Oh, definitely. Willis is a very, very electricity back, electric back. As you see, the keys to the game for Charleston right there is they have to get pressure on Christian Christensen. He's averaging. A completion per game, 70, 77%, like you said. Going to take a shot here, and that one's picked. Charleston, a beauty to start this game off. The interception there is good. It'll set up the offense really well. Johnny Bravo strikes. Johnny Bravo, hoo-ha, comes up with a big catch. A big interception, taking the ball away from Grayson Willis. And the Charleston defense, like you said, has come to play today and showed up early with an early pick to Christensen. TD Drew will lead his offense out eighth this season in the league in QBR. They will need a good performance out of him. Seven step drop to start this game off. Tipped up and incomplete. Oh, 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 oh. First play from scrimmage, and it was a weird deflection from Rain Rowe trying to bat it back inside to his teammates. Rain Rie almost comes up with a tip drill, but ball falls incomplete. Uh, TD Drew got lucky there, that ball not being intercepted here, coming up with second and 10. Second season in the league for Rie. Second and 10 here for TD Drew and this offense. Fifth season for Drew, the veteran gives to Keith Swearingen. Swearingen, little shake and bake, will pick up a couple. It'll bring up an important third and seven. Gerald getting points off of this turnover would be big. Definitely, as you see, the rookie... Outside linebacker Jay Mart 
we'll talk about later in this football game is having an amazing rookie season. Comes up with a big tackle of Swerdgen right there. Here is the shotgun snap on third and seven. Drew floats backside incomplete. It looked like a good throw, but it was a little slow getting there. Succo Lomano rises and deflects. Lomano could have come down with the interception right there. Two absolutely questionable balls thrown there by TD Drew on this drive, but it's going to bring out the field goal. You know, I do believe Amanda Moyer coming out here for what is going to be a huge attempt of 53 yards, I believe. Well, she will have her work cut out for her. Could be a long kick. She is a career 93% kicker, has only missed four in her three seasons in Charleston. This one up and on the way, and she nails it from 53. Amanda Moyer gives the Predators the lead. What a boot there by Amanda Moyer from 53 out. And that ball would have been good from 56. Wow, what a kick and an early 3 nothing lead here for Charleston. That's exactly the momentum they need. Beautiful night here in Jacksonville for football. Our Jacks Data crew has given a negative 2.5 spread here towards the Kings and an over-under of 41 and a half, 73 degrees tonight as... Mike St. Green brings this one out to the 23. Only saw the Jacksonville offense for a moment before Christian Christensen threw a pick. His back is Jared Willis. His fullback is Iggy Swift. Grayson Willis, Mike St. Green, Ken Gossett, and Jack Wall are the receiving threats for this Jacksonville Kings offense. They have a few players who have been in the season a long time. Christensen and Ken Gossett both have been here for eight seasons as the Kings in purple take back over. Christensen throws on the out route to the bottom of the screen, hits his man, Kenny G, and the Smooth Jazz picks up six. Uh, Kenny G has been an amazing player in this league. Coming in, he was one of only four players in SFL history with over 10,000 yards. In fact, he has 11,016 coming into tonight's ballgame, third all time. That will set them up here for second and four. Christensen, deep shot, almost taken away again. Wow, this Charleston team has had some opportunities early tonight. Corey Menner knocks that down. Could have been his fourth interception of the game. And as we look here, the keys to the game, they need to stay consistent throughout. In the last game that they had, they were up 10. They were down 10 before they came back to only lose by seven points. So they need to get... The offense, at least the offense, somewhat consistent. Christensen fires. Oh, a one-handed grab across the middle. They needed it to get them out of some trouble, and Grayson Willis delivers. Big catch for Grayson Willis going back to those keys of the game. They have to contain Keith Swearingen. Keith Swearingen is the third back right now, the third leading rusher in the SFL of 558 yards. And you see onward Christian Soldiers. He has a great wide receiving core of Willis, St. Green, Gossett, and the tight end, Jack Wall. Looks like he's not afraid to take some shots tonight. Fires a post route there. It's caught. Grayson Willis again up to the 49. Yeah, Grayson Willis was the third leading uh, receiver on in this team behind Gossett and Jared Willis, but Christensen's just shaking off that early interception, throwing two great balls to Grayson Willis here. And it looks like Jacksonville, like I said, just shrugged off the momentum uh, that they lost with that interception and is coming back ready to play. Split spread look here against a 4-2 for Charleston. Christensen stands in the pocket, delivers. Mike St. Green hauls it in and is tapped down there at the 45. The pressure was coming from Charleston's front. The Charleston's front three of Baker, Hollywood, and Sabolka are coming in with eight sacks combined. Bulkin with five of them by himself. Seventh overall in the SFL so far this season. Need to get a little bit more pressure on Christensen to make him force those interceptions again. Gives it to Willis, and that will set them up for third and short. Let's run through the full Charleston defense while we have a second. Dick Baker, Jeff Hollywood, and Joseph Sabolka are the defensive line. Jack Hoffman, Jack Brown, and Tommy Zanardi are the linebackers. Johnny Bravo, Corey Menner are the cornerbacks. 
Josh Reese, Zachary Bates, and Zach Lay are the safeties facing this third and two, trying to get off the field. Christensen under center will look to sling it. Pumps once, stands in the pocket, delivers to Willis, and he falls out of bounds short of the line to gain. That ball was thrown a little bit farther to the outside. Willis could not get his feet planted to be able to turn up field. And that's a, a brilliant opportunity missed there for Jacksonville. They're at the 42-yard line. They're going to bring out the punting and try to pin him deep. And it was actually John Ooh. Stamango who comes out at free safety this week, joining the Charleston team right from couch to field. And Jacksonville trying to draw this Charleston team off sides. The defense will stand pat. Let's see. No, timeout from Jacksonville. This Charleston team did not flinch, Gerald. Great, great discipline. In the Charleston Predators defensive line and linebackers not falling for the, uh, the hard count there by Christian Christensen. Going to force upon a good try there. It's going to bring up the punting unit, and they're going to pin him deep. Fourth and two. Punter will have to come on for Jacksonville. Howard McCoy will kick this one away with 6.49 to go in the first. They threw a pick. They have got a little bit more going here on the second drive, but it still stalls out. This Charleston defense does a good job, and now the offense will get the chance to try and take advantage of another stop. This one will bounce at the five and into the end zone for the touchback. Not going to be good enough there. And the Charleston offense will take back over. Uh, Charleston offense coming out onto this field with the 27.4 points per game, as you mentioned before, ninth best in the league so far. He really hasn't yelled that much, I believe. They're really consistent with their passing and spreading the bottom. They just haven't had that big punch yet. Drew off a helmet, and it's incomplete. Oh, my. Keenan Samuels had an opportunity there in that young man's career. The rookie, to take it away, could not get his hands around it. Lyric hit Lyric Da Vinci in the back of that helmet right there. Brings up a second and ten. Luckily, that ball wasn't intercepted. We saw a couple of tip drills in games earlier today. Two to the top of the formation here for Charleston. Blue helmets, white jerseys, white pants. Here is the give to Keith Swearingen. Swearingen re-angles off to the left side. Oh, man, if he would have been able to get away from that one, Gerald, we might still be calling his name. That was definite great uh, tackling there by Jacksonville, but they strung him out, and he almost broke it for that uh, long run, like you said. That tackle there, I believe the backup free safety, Will Parker, with a great open field tackle right there, being up third and six. Here is the throw. Drew into a lot of traffic. Bounces up and incomplete. Lyric Da Vinci, I think the intended receiver. And that drive will stall out as well. Clay Jones with the play. Clay Jones comes up with the, the, the actually, the, uh, if I could talk, the deflection right there. You see, just reading the eyes right there and basically just put up his hands almost like a basket catch. Comes up with a Fourth and six, and a great stand here by Jacksonville. It was almost like Charleston's play was, hey, everyone run to the same spot, and I'm going to chuck it there, and hopefully one of you catches it. Didn't quite work out that well for the Predators that time. They will have to kick back to this Jacksonville team. The crowd here in Jacksonville, you can almost just feel, Gerald, how excited they are for this opportunity in the Atlantic Division to take on a Charleston team that to this point in the season is even with them in terms of record well if you want more sfl you can visit the all-new sfl website at simulationfl.net for info on how you can create a player to join our community the league and the teams that play in it there are also links to apparel helmets and a comprehensive history of the sfl our over 1400 games and our thousands of players who have hit the virtual field the sfl we're putting the fan in fantasy Speaking of putting fans onto the field, Christian Christensen leads his offense back out and will take the shotgun snap. Stands in the pocket, fires, and overthrew the receiver. I'm surprised that uh, he didn't try to hit the running back out of the backfield right there. As you see, that Atlantic division you were talking about, look at that, four and one, and then you have three teams at three and two. And Carolina could have been four and one as well, but they suffered a 
really heartbreaking loss last week to Carolina. Charleston then falling to three and two will set us up here for this matchup today, which will break up some of that gridlock that the Atlantic Division is seeing. Christensen out to Willis out of the backfield, and Jack Brown runs him down to make it third and nine. Could not get past the open field tackle right there. Third and nine, they're not having a lot of success with those uh, flare-outs right there. They need to get the ball a little bit better downfield. I love to see them try to hit Gasset or, or even try to get Jack Wall involved. Christensen averaging 3.5 yards per pass attempt. We'll have to try for 9 or 10 here. Fires tipped up and incomplete off of the back of the defender. It's a nice play for Charleston to get off the field. Jack Hoffman makes the play. That was a great play by Hoffman to knock that ball. Now that ball would have been a little bit higher and thrown with a little bit more velocity. I think they would have got the receiver that was behind him. But either way, it was a great play to bring up fourth and nine and the punting unit out again. Kicker on, and Charleston will be set to field this one. Going to give their give their offense, excuse me, another opportunity. They came away with three because of the interception from Bravo very early in this game. Return here out to the 19, and this will be their uh, third offensive opportunity for Charleston. The Charleston's only gained seven yards offensively so far. I think TD drew over four. So they need to get something going here. I think Swearingen is the key. I think if you can get Swearingen going, it's going to definitely open up the passing game. Two receivers spread out. One in the backfield is Swearingen. Here is Drew. Fires. Oh, wow. He was tempting fate there, and he is lucky that. Uh, Jacksonville's Michael Sprouse did not make him pay for that one. Almost jumped Macaro. He's lucky he wasn't 0 for. He's lucky he's 0 for 5 with no picks instead of 0 for 5 with 1. Wow. TD Drew in this offense. They, I mean, they'll have to do that. There's a lot of great players on this Jacksonville defense. They are going to have to make some tough plays if they expect to win this game. Drew, seven-step drop, fires underneath. Too many receivers there. They ran into each other, and Drew's saying, what the heck? That Larrick Da Vinci right in the numbers, it looks like, and ball is another drop. It brings up third and ten. Yeah, TD Drew shaking his head right there because it should have been like th third and five, maybe even third and four, but third and ten is tough against this Jacksonville defense. 3-3 three, three look out of the Kings D to Receivers top of the screen. Here's Drew to throw. Pressure coming in his face. Drew has to fire, and it's picked off. Intercepted. Succo Lomano takes it away, and a huge turnover for the Kings. Big turnover there. As you see, that another tip drill. Succo Lomano just Johnny on the spot right there with the interception. Uh, another turnover could result in a great field position here for Jacksonville at the Charleston 25-yard line. Let's see if they can turn that interception into points just like Charleston did. Twins down to the bottom of the screen. And one in the backfield. Christensen moves in the pocket and dumps off to Willis. Gerald, it was the pressure from the two defensive ends that forced that interception there. Yeah, the two defensive ends for Jacksonville got uh, Tyquan Hale and Henry Norwood there, number two in top four in each of the sacks or tackles for losses. I believe Hale is four and two, and Horton Norwood is uh, three and four, I believe, on those stats. But unbelievable uh, experience by those two uh, defensive linemen. They put the pressure in Drew's face, and he turned it over. And now Iggy Swift benefits off of it. Nice little uh, flat route there, and he's able to pick up the first down, the player coming over from London to Jacksonville in the offseason. Yeah, nice little swing pass there. Get them a first down at the 13-yard line. I love to see them right now at least run the ball, maybe even a play-action pass to uh, Jared Willis here. Get it to your, your big, big Tight end, Jack Wall, 6'7", 255. 
single back. Offsides will be a free play here. Christensen dumps underneath. It is collected. Good for a couple of yards. We'll see what they do with the penalty. For now, it's a jack wall catch. I fear Jackson. I think you take the penalty and at the um, keep the give up maybe like a yard or two, but have an extra down. And that's exactly what they do. Take the for the penalty, make it first and five at the eight. Jumping off sides there. The Predators are in some trouble. I mean, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give up free yards. But if you are going to do it, um, inside of the red zone might not be the worst place. It just gives you a few less yards to defend. Up the middle, Willis. First down, carry to the three. Beautiful run there by Willis. Just taking defenders with him. Brings up a first and goal at the three. Jackson looks like they're going to punch this in for seven. First and goal from the three-yard line. Single back is Willis. 317 to go here in the first. They give Willis off the right side, and he is bottled up. Not going to get there that time. Nice job by the Charleston front four, bringing him down. Great play there by number 77, Bob Mallett. One of the unsung heroes of this Charleston Predator defense. Coming up with a big stop there for loss of one. Second and goal. Split backs, 4-3 look out of Charleston. Here's Christensen, steps up in the pocket, throws behind the line to Iggy Swift, and Swift brought down. It looked like Christensen was almost in the end zone as he flung it backwards, but it's no good. It'll be third down. I was surprised he threw that football. It looked like he had a clear path to the end zone. I don't know if he heard footsteps from somebody coming up or what, but uh, I think it's an ill-advised throw to bring up third and goal. Two backs in the backfield, one of the more wild plays we've seen today. Twins to the top of the screen, Christensen, three-step drop, back of the end zone, out of the arm's reach of Ken Gossett, and Charleston looks like they will hold Jacksonville to a field goal. Wow, great defensive stand there by Charleston to, to limit to Jacksonville. Probably just the three points here if this field goal is successful, but wow, just... At the 25-yard line with this type of offense with Garrett Willis, Christensen, and the crew, you'd think they'd be able to pop it in the end zone. It looks like they're going to settle for three. Anthony CC on to try and put this one through and tie this game. High snap, kick up, and good from 19-3 apiece between these three and two teams. Their defense is coming to play so far. Yeah, uh, Anthony, they nicknamed him Automatic. Perfect for his career now, 78 for 78. Both defenses have come to play. Picking off each quarterback one time, that offense only turning it into three points. So, so far it's a defensive struggle, what we expected from these two teams. This one kicked back to Charleston. They will bring it out of the end zone, out across the 15 to the 21-yard line. They gain an extra yard by bringing it out, and that – is where Drew will bring this offense back out onto the field. They have to find some momentum here. Both defenses are playing well. I'd like to see E.D. Drew possibly throw the ball deep here. Maybe, like, you know, take the top off the defense and give some running room for Swearingen. You have Buchanan Simons, who's second in the league at 19.9. Flip out Swearingen on first down. Oh. We'll pick up a couple before being hit hard on the outside. Clay Jones there to meet him. And let's run through this Jacksonville defense. Mike All, Tyquan Hale, A.G. Penny Packer, and Hunter Norwood are the defensive linemen. Clay Jones, Keenan Samuels, and Jay Mart are the linebackers. Rain Rie, Michael Sprouse, Bernard Gooden, Succo Lamano, and Alex Bond make up the secondary for Jacksonville. They already have an interception today via Lamano. Quick flip is tipped up. Anyone's ball, and no one comes down with it. I almost had it, Gerald. Yeah, your arms are too short. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, that, that ball was up in the air for a long, long time. As you see, just people just look <laughs> like they're just tossing it up there like LeBron with the powder. But either way, the ball falls incomplete. Third and 
five coming up. Man, both of these defenses are swarming to the football right now. Yeah, that five yard out or uh, the five yard flip out to Swearingen on the earlier play this drive is the only completion for TD Drew. One for nine today, and I would assume that he would throw here to make it his 10th pass. He will take a deep shot down the field, and it's caught! Oh, wow! Talk about threading the needle! Ken Makaro, ice in his veins! Big catch there for Ken Makaro. TD True coming up with a huge catch. Nice pocket there. Great time. And look at him just up and elevated and just fought for that ball over, I believe that was Michael Sprout. It was just a 50-50 ball, and who came down with it by Ken McCaro? Big catch. Two receivers top of the screen. Drew in the shotgun. Swearingen sidecar left against a 3-3 for Jacksonville. They give Swearingen, and he will lose a yard. J-Mart coming up with the stop right there. I believe along with number 58, Clay Jones. And as we said, J. Martin has been having a rookie year. Unbelievable. 32 tackles coming into this game with six of those tackles for loss. Two receivers. Here is Drew. Going to fire one deep, and it's picked off. Coming back the other way, Lamano, his second of the game. Sucko's having a great day as he sucks this offense and takes the ball right away from him. Like a vacuum, he just, whoop, that's mine. Yep, I'm looking for Makar, who beat him on that deep pass earlier in the drive. Not this time. As he reaches back, gets that interception and stops Charleston from driving the football. Now let's see if Christian Christensen can keep the ball in the team with the Purple's hands here. Not create another turnover, just like TD Drew did. Bunch bottom of the screen, single receiver to the top. They will throw. Here is the toss out to Willis, and Willis won't get very far. And uh, if there's one thing about Charleston and Jacksonville, Gerald, is that they like to play in some of these close games. Uh, definitely. Charleston's uh, close losses, uh, six games lost by 10 or less. That will take us to the end of the first quarter. And these two teams knotted up at three. You are watching the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports.
Gerald for Charleston last week. A bit of a nightmare and a close one. Yeah, did you see that pass here to Harish Prasad with less than 25 seconds to go. Puts him down at the 10-yard line. And as you see coming up here, it's going to be a heartbreaking way for Kara, for Carolina, or for Charleston, I'm sorry, to lose to Carolina here on a last second field goal, a walk-off. And you see right there, the clock hits, triples here as the ball goes through the upright. Close losses, we mentioned that on before we went to break. Last six games of their losses have been by 10 points or less. And believe it or not, all four games in this series have been 10 points or less. Just that close to being 4-1 and one and that close away from potentially a pick six. This Charleston team likes to play games of inches and almost a couple big turns could, could mean a lot different of a season. Yeah, Corey Minner there with the pass deflection. Yeah, when you lose those, when you keep losing games by six, by three, by seven, those are the, the type of games where you can just look back at a couple plays in a game. If we would have executed here better or picked that ball off or whatever, it could make a difference between a eight and six or a six and 18. Mike St. Green across the middle moves the ball down to the 49. Christensen getting in a little bit of a rhythm now. If that makes him 13 for 18, I believe, just over the 70-yard mark. And both of these offenses are struggling right now, surprisingly, with Jacksonville. And you have, like, almost one of the top uh, quarterbacks in the league. Two in the backfield. Christensen flips out Willis. Willis in the open field will pick up seven before being brought down at the 45. Yeah, the feeling out process of these offenses with these swing passes, I think the first quarter is you need to really get the feel of the defense, but right now you should be throwing those 10-yard, 15-yard slants, maybe trying to take the top off with a go route or something. You know, this conservative offense can come back to hurt you in the long run. 4-3 look out of Charleston. Give Willis. Willis ran right into a wall, and he is not going to get there. Charleston was prepared for that one. Dick Baker makes the play. Baker with a huge stop there. Brings up third and four from the 45. And Charleston somehow find a way again to stop this Jacksonville Kings offense. Just outside of automatics range, Anthony Cece will see if they can get into it. Christensen to fire. Caught. Willis across the middle. He's able to haul that one in. Grayson moves the ball to the 40, and he's got enough for the first down. Little shake and bake there by Grayson. Well, that was a quick hitting play. I liked it, even though it was a short pass, and I said about the short passes, that was a quick hitter that the defense couldn't react to, and that was a great first down, great uh, execution there by the Jacksonville Kings offense. Two to the top. Here is the give to Jared Willis. He will get a yard. Charleston looking really good against the run here tonight, Gerald. Hoffman coming up with the stop there. They have some great, great linebackers here. And Tommy Zanardi, Jack Hoffman, and then you have the veteran of the group right there as you see him, number 42, Jack Brown, a staple the cornerstone of this Charleston defense. Charleston defense. Charleston, I like that. Flip out here to Jack Brown, and Charleston sets up the wall and takes <laughs> down, takes him down five yards shy of the third down marker. But the Predators give up 53% of their third downs coming into this game. Let's see if they can get off the field here. Yeah, uh, that was a Charleston cornerstone there. But yeah, just Jack Brown coming up there. Again, with like the stop, and this is going to be where Jacksonville needs to be safe with the football. Just like a little, maybe a little pitch out here. Christensen does just that out to Willis, and he is pushed out shy of the line to gain. Nice job there for Charleston to close down the edge. Corey Menner pushes him out, and Anthony Cece will have to come on. That'd be a 47, 48 yard attempt. But Jack Brown again was there, along with Corey Manor. Corey Manor just sealed that off perfectly to not allow him to get that first down. Great defensive play there by Charleston. 
Kings bring on Anthony CC to try and break this tie. We are knotted at three here with 7.53 to go. CC sends it up and through. It is now 6-3, to three. Jacksonville on top. At the Battle of the Kickers, you got CC versus Moyer right now. CC's winning the battle 2-1. to one. And Jacksonville's leading this game 6-3. to three. Mr. Automatic sets the Kings up on top. And they will kick it back to the Charleston Predators, who just threw an interception on the last drive. Both quarterbacks have thrown interceptions. Neither one has a touchdown this evening. Here is the deep kick. CeCe puts it five to six yards deep in the end zone, and Charleston will just take an E and start out at their own 20. It has not been an ideal night, Gerald, for TD Drew, and Swearingen only has three carries so far. This offense sputtering. At three carries for six yards. TD Drew is two for 11. 38 yards, 33 of it coming on that, that one play to Makaro. So this offense is sputtering, like you said. Give Swearingen up the middle. He injects some life into this offense. A seven-yard carry out to the 27. A little slow to get up. He took a little bit of a shot there. It comes up. and get freaking, He's a tough, tough player. He, he's one of those, those backs that can take care of the ball. 20, 25, 30 times a game. You take a beating. Single back in the backfield is Swearingen again. They give it to him offset left side, and he will fall forward. It'll make it third and a yard. He's averaging three a carry. I'd give it to him again. I'd definitely give it to him again as Keenan Samuels hung on for dear life to have him not get that first down. Third and one, you have a power back. And, and Swearingen, you have the big guards up front, Fred Dukes and Butch Menner, who have the opportunity. Offside, free play, toss out Buchanan Simons. It is good for the first down. We'll see it. It might be comparable for them to take the penalty, plus or minus a yard. So we'll see what they do. But unofficially, it's Simons first catch of the night. Number 77, defense. Sorry, Joe. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they will keep it as Simon's first catch of the ball game as the penalty is declined. So I've, we've been seeing a lot of uh, offsides here so far in week six on like third and short where it just gives the offense a free play. And with these offenses, you can't do that. Jacksonville trying to get fire off the ball and get some pressure on TD Drew. So far tonight, it has worked. He is 3 of 12, only completing 25% of his passes. Swearingen bottled up right at the line, not going to get very far, right up the middle to make the play for Jacksonville was the defense. Jay Mart, like I said, rookie sensation for this Jacksonville defense just coming out of nowhere and stopping Swearingen in his tracks. Second and 11. They are going to throw. Here is Drew going to fire. That one's caught turning up field. Nice catch by Lyric Da Vinci out to the 42-yard line. Reaching out and just uh, grabbing that football. That was a great catch by Lyric Da Vinci, who struggled in the first quarter with a drop or two, but comes up with a beautiful grab right there. To bring up third and short. Two receivers split out. Swearingen offset to the right against a 3-3 look for Jacksonville. Important third down right around midfield. Drew fires. That one is caught. First down yardage. Ken McCarr on the sideline. They say he got the feet in. Oh, I'd love to see the replay on that. That ball was trucking a little bit for them to try to get his feet in on. Great, great challenge here, I think by the coaching staff of Jacksonville, the head coach, throwing that challenge flag. Let's see if we can get a better replay of that catch. Frank Gooden wants the Stripes to take another look at it. Let's see what kind of angle we have. Drew, Gerald, take us through it. I, you know, uh, he's he was, out. Oh, oh, he's out of bounds. Clearly, that right foot was definitely out of bounds and could not trail the left. This should be an easy overturn. They will overturn it. Jacksonville not charged a timeout. An important 
factor there, the timeout on the line, and Charleston will have to most likely bring on the punter to send this one away. I would be a bit surprised if they decided to go for it. They will punt it away. Smart move. You're only down three. No need to go for it. They have a whole second half of football plus 5-3 left to go in this quarter. Kick is away. Jacksonville will field it at the 20 and bring that out to the 24. We have an early update from Florida and Sioux Falls. Let's send it back to SFL Studios for a game break. Thanks, Andy. Robert, first play disaster for Sioux Falls. Yeah, the storm wasted no time. Stephen Bush gets a weak bump by the defensive back, and he has got nothing but green grass in front of him after that touchdown for the storm. On the first play, Florida trying to send Sioux Falls to a shocking 0-6. Back to Jacksonville with Andy and Gerald. Back here in Jacksonville. Thanks, Cam, for that update. Very shocking there that Sioux Falls, who almost won the championship last year, was one victory, obviously, away. It playing in that game uh, is 0-5 and staring down 0-6 if they cannot get a win tonight. A little bit tighter of a matchup between Charleston and Jacksonville here in front of us. The Kings on top by three. They have the football back, taking on this tough Charleston defense. Andy Hamilton along with Gerald Giudicesi. Second and three for Christensen, who dumps out Iggy Swift. First down yardage. Swift having a great night so far from the fullback position. That ball was thrown behind him, just gathers it in so nonchalantly one-handed for that first down. And get back to like you said about Sioux Falls. I mean, I mean, if you would have said that Two Falls would have been 0-5 and playing the way they've been playing, I would have said you're crazy. And, man, what a first play to go down just like that 7 to nothing. That's tough. Two backs offset to the right. Two receivers split out against a 4-3 look out of the Charleston Predators. Here's the quick throw. That one deflected oh, oh, oh. really well. Wow. Read beautifully by the linebacker. Great, great play there. By the inside linebacker, Jack Hoffman. As you can see, he read his eyes perfectly for that quick hitter play. Came up with a great bat down deflection. Brings up second and ten. Split backs in the backfield. Two receivers wide for Christian Christensen, who hasn't had a superb night, but definitely is playing better than Drew. He'll fire that one. Wall makes the catch across the middle. That's a big gain out to midfield. And, Gerald, one of the bigger gains we've seen out of Jacksonville receivers tonight. Definitely. You see Jack Wall, the big 6-7 target coming up. And as you see, you see these short passes again. If you can believe this, he is the leading receiver at 9.6 yards a catch. The only team with no receivers averaging 10 plus yards reception. None. I think Jack Wall in our community, one of the better members, would be the first one to tell you that that is a surprising statistic that he leads the receiving core. Flip out here to Willis. Willis in some space is able to pick up five before being brought down. Now, if you're coming into this game, you had Jack Wall at 9-6. Now, they're consistent. Jack Wall at 9-6. They have Grayson Willis at 9-2, Mike and Green at 9-2, Dawson at 9-1, and Jared out, of the, Jared out of the backfield is 4-1, but none over 10 yards. Two receivers, bottom of the screen on second and five. They give Willis right up the middle. Willis will fight for yardage. It'll bring up third down. Coming up on the SFL Halftime Report, Cameron Irvine and Robert Garrett Jr. analyze the first half, provide updates on Florida and Sioux Falls, and they'll present the top ten plays from last week. It's all coming up on the SFL Halftime Report. You won't want to miss it. About three minutes and some change away from getting there but not first before Jacksonville faces this third and four. Charleston showing blitz. They only bring four. Christensen floats. Cut. Kenny G will see you later. Jacksonville strikes first there in the end zone. Kenny G with the first touchdown of this game. His 83rd of his career, and it couldn't have come at a better time for Jacksonville. As that ball was just laid perfectly right between 
the two defenders breaks the tackle of Corey Manor and then just takes it to the purple and gold painted end zone. Takes it for six and extends the lead to nine. And pushes this Charleston team towards uh, their own touchdown that they need now, Gerald. I think that arguably is more important than the lead. Charleston has struggled on the offensive side. If it was just a field goal game, you would imagine that they could keep it really tight. But with Jacksonville finding the end zone, it's going to put that pressure on Charleston's offense. Now 13-3, to a 10-point difference. Oh, I agree. They are not playing well offensively right now. If you look at Charleston's stats, six carries for 14 yards for Swearingen has a catch for seven. I'm sorry, a catch for five yards. And TD drew four of 14 for 52 yards and two interceptions. This is going to be basically in the hands, I think, of uh, Keith Swearingen. He's got to find a way to spark this offense. Rochelle Colston and Tom Rahman in the stats truck for us. We appreciate them keeping us honest with the numbers as we watch this game live and try and keep up with some of these great milestones that the players are coming up on. Charleston coming back out on the offensive side, only have four completions to their name, six rushing attempts, and I think when they get a good run from Swearingen to start the drive, that usually starts them off on the right foot. They will take the ball here and start at their own 20 with three minutes to work with. Deep drop. Drew in trouble. Down he goes. Hunter Norwood. Big sack for Hunter Norwood. Brings up second and long here for the Charleston offense. Drew trying to go hurry up. Will give Swearingen. Oh, Jacksonville wasn't expecting that, and he'll rip off a huge run. That's yeah, a th third and sort of medium third and eight here for this hurry up offense. I think they caught him in something. Drew. Nice throw to Lyric Da Vinci. Drew able to work his way out of that sack beautifully. Unbelievable. Just stepping up in the pocket and hitting Da Vinci there, right there in the numbers. And Charleston's actually looking pretty good right now. Drew fires. Caught on the corner. Ken Maccaro oh. tiptoes the <laughs> sideline. What a play. Just over Michael Spress, but like you said, tiptoeing down the sideline. Didn't bring in that one before, but brought in this one. As you can see, oh my. there's a double foot tap. What concentration on that football. So even turn at, as he was going down to the ground, maintaining possession. Unbelievable catch there by Makaro. Drew's QBR right now, 14.6. It doesn't matter. He's trying to lead his team down the field to points. Down by 10 with two minutes to go. Here is Drew firing again. Tipped up and picked. Oh, taken away by Sacco Lomano. The hat trick for number 42 takes us right to the two-minute warning. We're back to Jacksonville after this break. Play.
<laughs> Jacksonville, Florida, the site of tonight's game, and the Jacksonville Kings are putting Charleston in a really tough spot, Gerald. They've scored on their last three drives, and they took the ball away from Charleston right there. Saka Lomano, third interception of the game. Flip out to Willis is going to go nowhere, but this Jacksonville defense, Gerald, imposing their will. Oh, definitely. Just Saka Lomano, I thought you said, having the half of his life a tackle, two pass deflections, as you mentioned, the hat trick of interceptions, just in a half of football, you see Christensen with the 82 and a half rating at one touchdown, that being that Ken Gossett and 160 plus yards. That was an unbelievable catch there by Ken Gossett. Usually you can see those players going out of bounds a couple plays short, a couple yards short of the first down, but was able to turn his shoulders upfield and grab that first down yardage. That's what a, a big eight-year vet will, big season vet will do for you, getting that first down. 4-3 look out of Charleston. 147, two timeouts for Jacksonville left. Here is the short flip down. It is caught. Only good for a couple of yards there. Jason Stackhouse hauls it in. Back up tight end there. Jason Stackhouse, 6'4", 225. Jacksonville just having two timeouts. Plenty of time on the clock. And you have an offensive momentum right now. Second to none in this game. Three wide. Willis offset towards the right. 4-2 look out of Charleston. They'll flip it out to Willis and Willis. Oh! -ho -ho! Stiff arm right out of his back. Arm of steel, young man. Zach Lay was told to lay down by Jared Willis with a stiff arm. Just knocking him for a loop. Great, great play there. Gains a couple extra yards. Makes a third and five. Talk about power. Jacksonville here outside of field goal range. Going to try and pick up this third down. Christensen has to move in the pocket. Fires off his back foot. It's deflected. Jack Brown got just enough of it to force the incompletion. You want to talk about a, just a great player in Jack Brown. Unbelievable career right now. It's just just to just, pull it up, look at that. 886 tackles for his career. Look at that last game against Jacksonville. 18 tackles. Two of those for loss and a pass deflection. Oh, and by the way, he's tied for ninth all time with three forced fumbles in his career. But Jack, Jack Brown is just such an important player on this defense, calling the line calls and everything. Just a fantastic, fantastic, solid player. Yeah, really quite a cornerstone of this Charleston uh, team, as you were saying. Yeah, def a definite uh, plus on the defensive side of the football. And P.D. Drew coming out here with a buck left with a minute to go in this half. Six for 17, 80 yards, three interceptions, all by that man, as you just saw, Succo Lomano. Uh, you just might be running the football here just to be down and be only by be only be down 10 at the half. Here is Drew. Drew will check down to Swearingen on first down. Swearingen spins out of a couple, picks up two. All right there, you see the, com the comparison right there. The three interceptions, just absolutely key right now. I believe that all of Jacksonville's points came on those three interceptions. They'll have time still running. They do have all three timeouts. Drew is in the shotgun with two wide. And he'll look to sling it. He fires underneath. That is caught. Makaro out to the 30, and they look content to take this score to the half, Gerald. Oh, I, if I was Charleston, I definitely would with uh, quarterback having such a rough first half. Unless you, unless you can break a big play here. Maybe call a timeout, but I just think you're going to go into the half being down 10. 
Here is the give. Swearingen right up the middle, and he is cut down, and that will take us to the zeros. 13-3, Jacksonville on top of Charleston. We'll be back with the SFL Halftime Report with Cameron Irvin and Mike St. Green after the break. Welcome to the SFL's uh, Halftime Report, along with Robert Garrett Jr. I'm Cameron Irvine, and what a great first half from Jacksonville. You know, I, I'm not sure that the score looks as bad um, as the, the result, or if Charleston's actually playing better than being down 10. I really can't make up my mind about it, but it's 13-3 for the Kings. What do you think about it, Robert? Yeah, I think the biggest vice for Charleston so far in this game is um, they haven't been given the ball to Keith Swearingen very often. Only eight carries for about 25 yards. Uh, they're leaning a lot of weight into TD Drew. And uh, for so far in the game, you know, Succolomano has had his number, a hat trick of interceptions in the first half of this game, uh, just been playing lights out. Absolutely. Um, it, it's been a pretty outstanding performance by Jacksonville. Charleston – not playing bad, but they, they look shaky. Succo Lomano has taken over the, that game, um, and that's been awesome to see. Uh, Sioux Falls let up that touchdown on the first play. We showed you live here on 11 Sports, and there hadn't been a score since. Second quarter over there, 7 nothing Florida. Ron Cochran, Florida's quarterback, just threw an interception in the end zone. And, uh, you know, Sioux Falls has done well to hold their own after that gaffe on that play action that faked everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Their uh, defense has really been able to keep them in the game. The offense starting to get it figured out, but uh, they got to get going here soon. Florida is a very stingy team, not going to give up a whole bunch of points as this game continues to move forward. Absolutely hard. 28 yards on eight carries so far on the ground for Sioux Falls. Well, it was a great week five. Um, we've already seen one of the top plays, the game-winning field goal for Carolina on the top plays list, but uh, there were nine other great ones. And uh, we've got them for you now. The top 10 plays of week five coming up. First down and 10. Drew, shotgun formation, takes the snap. He's slinging the rock across the middle. Pass by Simons. He's on the move. 20, 10. Wow. Touchdown, Buchanan Simons. No way. Wow. And <laughs> Coach Allen is pointing at us again. 
they threw it right down the middle. I did not expect that, and uh, with the with the bomb, <laughs> it was a fight to see who was going to come up with it. But a great pass by uh, TD Drew to get it uh, where he needed to. Here he is under center. Turns gets the hard second carry, and Colin Hart has the slow oh. in the backfield. He's on his way down the sideline. <laughs> 30, 20, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Super Bowl. Colin Hart explodes out of a cannon. Wow. Even Denver. We brought Denver with us down to Oklahoma today, and he's excited. Everybody's getting into the act. What a beautiful run. And he's got some speed, Colin. It looks like they might have had an angle on him right there. No. He just runs past everybody. Or Pierce. Pierce out of the gun. Three steps out of the gun equals five in a normal play. And oh, it's no. a risky ball. It's out there. It's intercepted by the Scorpions defense. And there is room for number 29. Oh, is it 39? Who is it, brother? It is number 39, Iverson. <laughs> Instagram gamble. This man is hot fire already. He has just pulled out a jock jackpot. What a catch. What a catch. He's just right there standing, picking up the ball. Didn't have to do anything out of his way to pick this one off, and he just runs the way to the end. Eddie Max Paul's teams when Florida was at its peak, winning three straight SFL championships. Second and eight. Wilson to the near side, caught for a touchdown. Fox Highwind as his first touchdown as a member of the Aztecs, and Mexico City's a point after away from another tie. Well, we talked about an athletic play by Jeff Como on the other side of the ball. Well, here, look, check out this athletic play. Wow, to snatch the ball and to get it over the pylon in one move. Terrific, terrific move there by the second year pro. Back in at 15, Alexander Gold. They're going to go empty set here. Three down defensive lineman for the Predators. 24 seconds left to go. Gold taking a shot. Oh. This is caught. Hermes Prasad. He's down the sideline. lines being chased. He breaks out of a tackle. Down to the 10. Oh, my gosh. Tick tock, people. The clock is ticking. Let's go. One timeout remaining for Carolina. Yeah, they did not get out of bounds. Are they going to burn the timeout? Three seconds. Yes, they will. History on his foot right here. Can get a win for the Skyhawks in the battle of the Carolina. Snap is down. Getting in there, but it's kicked. It is through the uprights, and the Skyhawks win. Walk-off fashion. Down and 13 after the loss. Dynasty forced to roll to his right. He throws another pick, and this one might go the other way. 15, 10, 5. You can put it on the board. It's Jay Bart. He's having the game of his life. He's got his first career pick six, and Jacksonville takes the lead. Another blue light special from the rookie, capping off an outstanding game and giving Jacksonville the lead. Look at this, gets under the route. It's Jamal Wooding, and Mark just jumps up and takes the ball away from him. And he's got a lane, and he's off to the races. It's checkout time for Jay Mart and the Jacksonville Kings. Here from the eye, it's actually a 10 point game. My apologies with an extra point blocked. It's 13 to three. On the ground they go. Charlie Boletsky has his best run of the day. Breaks off of a tackle. He's still going. Charlie Boletsky to the house. 73 yards. Florida takes the lead right back. Is there any wonder why Florida is so excited about this rookie? Third round, first pick that they're in the third round. Uh, by the Florida Storm, but here, let's just take a look here. Able to go through the traffic there, find his way through the trash. Look at the Jets to separate and the power to break through the tackle. Boy, we've seen so much through the air. Now, a breakthrough on the ground. The goal now from the three. Pepper will uh -oh. throw once again. Pressure Pepper. coming, fires back in the end zone. One-handed oh. catch, touchdown, Legion. Dan Daly. Back-to-back -back receptions, this time putting six on the board. Yeah, Pepper was getting blitzed. I was getting nervous for him. He had to get rid of that ball. Wait at the very last. Look at this. That's P.I., by the way. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The one-handed scoop for the touchdown. Oof. League with 11 passing touchdowns. Kendra Hall has four play action. Firing towards the end zone, and it it's is hot. caught for a Vancouver touchdown. Dan Daly does it again. Dan Daly is Houdini on this drive. Like again, there was all I three, saw was yellow around Pepper. Three defenders. Look at one, look at two, that. three. Look at all those hands. <laughs> two 
Logan Jack in the backfield. Goal dropping back to the end zone. Caught for wow. a touchdown. Keith McDaniel Jr. <laughs> Unbelievable. That was, I, I did not expect him to catch that one. Looked like the, the, the defender had that uh, well to rights, but what a make call. Second down, short drop, throws into traffic, oh, caught, oh, breaking yeah. the tackle and into the end zone, touchdown Likens. Well, there's Jack Flash. There he is. Flashing into the end zone. He didn't jump, but he sure as heck broke a tackle. That's, that's an incredible play, boy. Let's take a look. Flash on the outside, runs another post, gets bumped by two defenders, just whips the guy to the ground and says, nope, my end zone. Oh, man, what a great week. And Buchanan Simons in the uh, twitch.tv slash FTF next chat room right now saying, bask in the glory of the kid. The number 10 play, top 10 plays this week. He was number one in week three. They're going to need some top 10 plays out of him in the second half down 10. Yeah, absolutely. Their, uh, their passing game has really struggled to get going. TD Drew again with three interceptions. Um, they just got to get a little more complicated, I think, with it. Uh, mix things up a little bit. See if you can get Keith Swearingen going as well. And uh, maybe then they can catch Jacksonville off guard. Sioux Falls has tied the game 7-7 seven, seven, uh, against Florida. But in our spotlight game here on 11 Sports, it is 13-3 Jacksonville over Charleston. We'll get it out to Andy and Gerald for the second half of your game coming up after this. This has been the SFL Halftime Report, and you're watching the SFL on 11 Sports. Hi, Levin. I'm Andy. Back here in Jacksonville, Florida, Andy Hamilton along with Gerald Giudicesi for tonight's contest. The Charleston Predators are behind to the Jacksonville Kings. They get the ball first, and we are back underway from Duval County. Return here coming out of the end zone for the Predators across the 20 and shoulder down right there. We'll see if Charleston can come out with a little bit more gumption than they have offensively. TD Drew, 8 of 19 for 89 yards and three interceptions. Swearingen only eight carries for 25 yards. Uh, the big target for Charleston, and Simons, only one catch for five yards. So they got to get something going here offensively. Plenty left to be desired. Swearingen off the left side will get a yard. Nothing more out to the 21. 
get tackled there by Clay Jones along with Suckle Amato. Just seems to be around the football this whole game. Brings up a second and nine. I think they got us. They're doing a great job in containing Swearingen right now. So uh, let's see if this defense can keep rolling here for Jacksonville. Two tight ends on the field. They give Swearingen right up the middle. Jacksonville all over it again. It'll be third and nine. See. Big rookie there, Jay Mart, along with, I believe, Mike, all there on the tackle. Third and nine. I think they're just trying to settle uh, E.D. Drew down here, but it's going to force a passing situation here on third and nine. Two receivers. Shotgun look for Drew here. Moves out of the pressure. Fires well short of the line. It's not even a catch. It's out of bounds. And just like that, Charleston's drive. Uh, dries up and they have to punt. Saquon Hale putting the pressure on TD Drew. And boy, this offense is just, just it's running in quicksand right now. You're going to punt the ball to Jacksonville, who, believe it or not, with the three interceptions, should be up by more than 10. If you're Charleston, like uh, Cam said in the, in the halftime show, that they should be happy that they're only been down 10. Kick is away. Here is St. Green on the return out to the 49, and the Kings start with really good field position, and uh, they had gotten a little bit of a rhythm there at the end of the half. Gerald, they would like to continue that here in the second half. Definitely, and the, what they're going to be leaning on really is their experience in this, in this, in this ball club. I mean, you're talking about a very veteran football team here in Jacksonville. Let's get the carry. I mean, if you look at Jacksonville, they had their hundredth win last week, and Charleston has 80 games played all told. So, uh, you talk about experience, Jacksonville's got it. They would like to put that experience to use here in the second half to get the win. Christensen going to fire down the middle, and it's incomplete in and out of the hands of the receiver was looking for Ken Gossett. Uh, Zach Lay knocks the ball out of Gossett's hands, bringing up a third and six. Another thing about Jacksonville, you can say with, with the experience, is they know how to win ball games. As I said 100 wins for their uh, the franchise, 152 record, not bad. Winning 51% of those on the road. 51% of their road contest, they win. That dangerous pass is incomplete. Charleston's defender, Johnny Bravo, already has a pick tonight. Almost had a second one, but it stalls out the drive. And I don't think they're going to trot out CC to try from this distance. Oh, no. Took these plus yards way out of his range. Bring in Howard McCoy here and get him deep. And since your defense is playing fantastically right now, just put it in their hands. Punter is on, so Charleston's defense will get the hold. Howard McCoy kicks this one away, and the return man, DeLake, will bring this up to the 13. So Charleston pinned back. A little bit of a field position game so far here in the second half, Gerald. Yeah, a couple uh, three and outs there, and just feeling each other out again here in the uh, opening stages of this third quarter here. This game is really tight. I mean, it's a 10-point game, but it just seems like it's just those one or two mistakes there by Charleston that's actually hurt them. Two receivers wide. They'll give Swearingen a little bit of a pull. Swearingen, one of his better runs of the night, breaks off nine. Just the leg drive right there, just pushing defenders back to gain nine yards. Second and one. This is where if T.D. Drew was doing a little bit better, a play-action pass would be a perfect perfect call right now. But the way he's struggling, I think he just hand the ball off to number 32. 
Here is Drew. Drew floats one. That one's Jay's Taylor's ball. He's first catch of the night, and he is out to the 33-yard line. Charleston moves the chains and extends this drive. That was like almost like a long handoff there. Just no one around him. As you saw, great, great route. Great call, offensive play call there. At least get him uh, five yards. Nice first down. Get some momentum going for your offense and see what you can do here on first and ten. Fresh set of downs. They will start again with a give to Drew, or to Swearingen, excuse me. He spins, and it, with eight minutes to go in the third, he picks up a couple more. Keep up with the SFL and its teams on social media, at SimulationFL. Follow and subscribe to all of our channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and even TikTok. From teams to podcasters, final scores to major highlights, SFL Social has you covered. 3-3 look here out of Jacksonville's defense, trying to defend Swearingen on this drive. Here is Drew, going to fire across the middle, tipped up and incomplete. That was a nice play there across the middle by Clay Jones, and they got to be careful with the middle of the field. These linebackers for Jacksonville, Will Ballhawk. I definitely. I mean, you have, like I said, Clay Jones, five pass deflections. You have uh, Keenan Samuels with two. Jay Mart with one coming into this football game. Just having an absolute field day right now, tipping the balls away in the middle of the field. Give Swearingen on third and six. He strung out, doesn't get a yard. He'll actually lose one. Hunter Norwood breaks that drive in half, and Charleston will have to kick. Hunter Norwood gets a tackle for loss, his 148th of his career. The big guy right there, as you can see, 6'2", 325. Comes up with the stop there and forces another three and out by Jet, by Charleston. A little bit of a low snap. It was corralled, and Wally Saddle gets the kick away. And here is St. Green. A little bit of a spin, but, Gerald, this game's so important in terms of the Atlantic division. There is a blockade of teams at three and two, and Florida on top of that division right now currently losing to Sioux Falls 10 to seven on the SFL Twitch page. So an important night in terms of the Atlantic Division and teams keeping pace. We know Char or, uh, Carolina is watching Charleston and Jacksonville here to see uh, how that situation works out. Christensen stands in the pocket, flips out to Willis. Willis with a first down run out to the 46. Great play call right there. Just a nice little swing pass open for... Jared Willis, as you see here on the replay here, he just lost it. He just got no containment on the outside. You can just see no one in the picture right there. And it forces Jack Brown to run him down from behind, but gets the first down. And that's the only the tenth first down projectable compared to six for Charleston. Two receivers, bottom of the screen. Single back is Willis. Eight in the box for Charleston, including their cornerback. They're playing a 4-3 defense. Here is Christensen. Pressure right in his face. Able to unload underneath, and that will be incomplete. Let's check in with Florida and Sioux Falls and what's going on around the league back at SFL Studios. Thank you, Andy. Robert Garrett Jr., one of the best plays of the year. Absolutely. Bullet Boletsky trying to advance the ball downfield as the second quarter was running out of time. Ball ends up getting knocked loose by Jay Ringgold, and the big man, Jonathan Camp, scoops and scores into the end zone. Sioux falls up by 10. And Charleston gets a pick. Back to Andy in Jacksonville. Thanks, Cam. Huge interception there. Josh Reese takes it away. Charleston has new life. They were trying to hit Ken Gossett. Great pick and something that this Charleston defense needed. They were trying to find Gossett. Gossett has been one of the favorite targets for Christensen tonight. Four catches, 58 yards, and a score, and they force one. Reese makes him pay for it. Two receivers split out. There's a flip. Catch made. Buchanan Simons in traffic calls it in. He's down to the 44. We finally get to hear from Buchanan Simons. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I mean, all choked up. They finally get the catch. Uh, had to catch up the game only on five targets for 15 yards. They need to get him involved more in this offense. He is their big play threat. Haven't heard from him tonight. Been a little quiet. Here is the flip out. That is Jay Taylor again. First down yardage for the tight end. Jay Taylor, no catches in the first half. Has two, both of them, for first downs here in the second. Jack uh, Charleston seems to be moving the ball right now in this Jacksonville defense. They're at the 34-yard line. They are in, in field goal range right now for Amanda Moyer, but they need to put this ball in the end zone. They need to get seven here. They need to catch Cash in. Got to keep pace with Jacksonville, who scored in the first half. Give Swearingen left side on a little bit of a sweep, and Swearingen picks up five out to the 29. Another good run from Keith. It was a good run from Keith. I think he would have had a better chance of getting more yards if he would have kept going to the outside instead of cutting it back in where all the traffic was. But either way, it was a great gain of five yards to bring up second and five at the 29. They will give Swearingen again, and he spins and will be a yard short third and one pivotal down here, Gerald. Definitely, yeah. I think if, you, if you're if you smart, if you're Charleston, you might well just, just keep it in the hands number 32 to get that first down because you're in field goal range. Don't take points off the board with an interception here. But let's see what happens on third and a long one. Swearingen averaging 3.1 yards per carry so far. They give it to him again. Off the left side through one. Stiff arm still driving the legs. He picks up the yardage. He's in the SFL red zone down to the 19. And Charleston is on their best drive of the night. Definitely. She burns and just shakes his head like they can't stop me right now. And Jacksonville can't. They're just absolutely just running the football down Jacksonville's throat. Empty set here. Drew under center. He will take a seven-step drop. Fires underneath, and it was nearly taken away. Oh, man, you got to be careful when Bernard Gooden's in coverage. Yeah, Bernard Gooden would have had his third interception of the season right there. Luckily for TD Drew, that wasn't his fourth of the game. Ball falls to the turf, brings up second and ten. Let's see if they can. I'd like to see a play action pass here. For Swearing to maybe just draw those uh, linebackers in a little bit. Ace quads formation, both tight ends on the field, single back. Drew under center will give Swearingen right up the middle. Swearingen driven backwards. Rain Row was right there to make the play. Again with the with the run to that right side, and Jacksonville had it scouted perfectly. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to hide. East Swearingen gets tackled for a loss of two. Brings up a big third and long situation here for Charleston. 30 and 12 from the 21. Short drop. Out route throw. Nearly taken oh. away. Incomplete. But Michael Sprouse sat on it. Made the deflection. And Charleston will have to kick. Two great defensive plays. And two great defensive calls by defensive coordinator for Jacksonville. Puts players in great positions, and it's going to force them to settle for a field goal. But it was for Charleston, it was probably their, their best drive of the game. Amanda Moyer on. Their first field goal was after an interception. She puts it up, and their second field goal is after an interception as well. 13-6, to six, Jacksonville on top of Charleston. Big field goal to cut it within one score. We will be right back. You're watching the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports.
Back here in Jacksonville, Andy Hamilton along with Gerald Judicessi, Rochelle Colston, and Tom Rahman running the stats for us from Duval County. The Jacksonville Kings on top, only by a single score, though, Gerald Charleston able to cut into that lead. Yeah, Charleston just will not go away. I mean, both these clubs have made five turnovers combined so far, and it's just a tightly contested football game it's one of those games where the experience will take over that will make you win ball games it just has to get the experience just makes you win these close games and not make that crucial error christiansen 27 of 38 today but they start with a willis run that goes nowhere right there to make the play for charleston is hoffman hoffman again coming up with the big stop there is fifth tackle of this football game brings up a second and ten here and if you're jacksonville you really don't need to really take chances here you're uh the defense is playing well only giving up two field goals and that's after two interceptions so if you can keep the ball in your hands you're in good shape willis nowhere to go on that play either uh i believe he met jack brown in the hole there and it'll be third and 11. Jack Brown going with the old-style Matt Barr type of helmet for a defensive player. You don't see that too often, but third and 11. This is a big down here for Charleston defense if they can get off the field here, get the ball back in decent field position for their offense. Split spread. Here's Christensen going to fire across the middle. Tipped up. Jack Brown makes the deflection and the incompletion will force Jacksonville to punt. Jack Brown coming out of that uh, field goal with some pep in his step, making two fantastic plays on second and third downs here. The force to punting it on, and right now, Little Mo might be changing his sweater from purple to white. Punter is on here, 2.22 to go here in this third quarter of play. And Charleston will get the ball back after a drive that resulted in three. Nice little return from Dulake up to the 46. And let's head back to SFL Studios for a game break. Thank you, Andy. Robert, Florida scored on the first play of the game. They haven't scored since. Yeah, fantastic blocking there on that play. Seals the edge and allows Colin Hart to walk into the end zone. This game has been all Sioux Falls except for that very first play. The Sparrows have turned it around. Back to Andy and Gerald in Jacksonville. Two falls there in South Dakota. Back here in Jacksonville. Swearingen up the middle for five. And Gerald Swearingen isn't really demolishing anyone with big runs, but he is wearing down this defense. Averaging three yards, 18 characters, 55 yards. And those are hard 55 yards, but he likes to dish out the punishment. Like you said, it's wearing down that defense. Four wide here. Second and five. They give swearing gin. That time wrapped up. Not going to go anywhere. Mike All with the play at midfield. Great ankle tackle there by Mike All at midfield, making it third and six. This is, again, another crucial play here for the Charleston team here. And they convert. They are four for 12 on third downs right now. They need to go five for 13. Twins top of the screen. Drew incomplete was trying to find Lyric Da Vinci. That pass is going across the middle to Da Vinci quite a bit. But this time I believe that was big number 57, Jay Mart. They're knocking the football down. And Charleston had stopped and a big, big stop for the Jacksonville defense. Matching Charleston's being out earlier. Jay Mart, not one you want to test across the middle. Gerald was making teams pay uh, last week and made the play there to force Charleston off the field. A big play from the young linebacker there. And, oh, what a hit on this side. These two teams are getting ready. <laughs> Ray Archer just introduced himself there to Mike St. Green on that punt return. What a hit. You just fair caught that. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna get in the yard, fair catch it and save the hit. Twins bottom of the screen. 4-3 look here out of Char or out of 
Yeah, Charleston. Jacksonville here drops to pass. Christensen complete to Jack Wall. Good for six. Dangerous pass across the middle of all that traffic. It just goes up and gets it. Or, uh, like you said, but 6-7. You can get those, those uh, high balls right there over Zanardi. Brings up second and four. It's a gritty contest between two gritty teams. Defensive standoff. If that is what you like, this game is for you. Single back is Willis. They will give it to him right up the gut. Willis still churning the legs. Has first down yardage to the 25. That was a great run. Just was patient to just look for a little seam. And being 5'11", just finds a little hole and just squirts right through it. He gets enough for the first down. Coming up here on the end of the third quarter. Willis Brothers, some of the many family members that make up the Simulation Football League. Great for families to get involved. They fire it there to Ken Gossett, who steps out of bounds with three seconds left in the third. They want to run one more. I like this, this short, incremental offense here. They're playing safe. They have the lead. They're just, just content right now, just, just methodically moving the ball downfield. Not taking too many chances. That will take us to the end of the third. Jacksonville on top, trying to hold on to their lead. Charleston trying to claw back in it. You're watching the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports. We'll be right back. Looking for a hero tonight, Gerald. Last week, Jay Mart, the hero for Jacksonville. As you see, a nice interception right there. And just taking it to the house for the pick six. Ended up being the game-winning score. They did tack on a field goal late. But yeah, big, big play there by the rookie, Jay Mart. Winning that game basically for Jacksonville over Atlanta. He's having a great game tonight. Yeah, four tackles, two of those for loss. And the pass deflection that you see here, just absolutely great play. One of the top 10 plays of the week, and deservedly so for the rookie, J. Mart. Second round selection, 14th pick in that round out of Annapolis in the minor league. You can get involved at simulationfl.net, join our minor league season, and get drafted this upcoming year. That oh. throw offline for Christensen pressure from Mallet was in his face. As you see, Goss has been targeted 10 times. He only has five catches and that one drop. But that was, an, I think, an ill-advised throw there by Christensen. Now brings up third and six. Let's see what Magic Christensen and this Jacksonville offense can do. Johnny Bravo talking some smack there. 
Trips tight to the bottom of the screen for Christensen. Floater caught just enough for the first down to Jack Wall. A veteran move by Christensen with a veteran with a third year, I'm sorry, still or just the poison of a veteran. Look, just gets to the first down, knows where he needs to go, gets there. Great execution by both of those Jacksonville Kings to get that first down. Keep this drive alive. Wall's third catch only has 25 yards, but has been important in terms of when and how they utilize him. Here's a first down throw outside, caught. Mike St. Green on the sideline, drags the feet and picks up four. Yeah, yeah it's positive yards. Not, they haven't had a negative play in quite a while. Hopefully they don't jinx them. They're just playing just solid football, getting those first downs. They're doing great on third down conversions right now. They're 6 of 12 for the game. They're about to run the 62nd play of the football game. Score would make it tough for Charleston to get back in the game. Here's a throw, and it's caught. Mike St. Green on the slant. Christian Christensen threads the needle and just now going over 31,000 yards in his career. Great job, by Christian. Just, I have no idea how that ball found its way through Jack Hoffman and into the arms of Mike St. Green. I thought for sure that was going to be a pass deflection and ran it down. Three wide they give to Willis right up the gut. He'll pick up three more, and they are probably, what would you say, Gerald, five, ten yards away from possibly attempting a field goal? I'd say they'd have to get another first down here to, to be in the CC's range. I think he can go from 54-55. So I would say maybe I started to think another first down or getting really close to it would be helpful. Here's a throw. Willis catches, and there's your first down right on cue. Grayson Willis with his fourth catch of the game, only for 30 yards, but still, they're positive plays, short, positive plays. Not only just breaks the will of the defense, but while you have the lead, it also tears down that clock bit by bit. It is a seven-point lead, trying to extend that. Here is the give right up the middle there to Iggy Swift, and Iggy Swift breaks off three to make it second down. There is there's the first down, and there's the three yards that they need right now. You're in about a 52-yard range. I think that's just maybe right on the edge. Of CC probably a little bit inside the his best, but great play calling right now. Flip out Willis on the outside through one first down. Wow! Put the shoulder down and charge. Amazing play calling right now here by Jacksonville, mixing the run and the pass. Did you see the little little flare out there? And there's nobody in the screen, and he just absolutely runs over Corey Menner. I believe Corey Miller was one that got stiffed arm earlier by, by him earlier, I think earlier in the third quarter. But uh, an 11 play, this 11 play of the drive coming up, longest drive of the game. Jacksonville held the other longest drive with 10. That one ended in a field goal. Christensen, pressure in his face, fires St. Green, collects it at the 17. First down again, and Jacksonville continues to move this drive down the field. Christensen is like a surgeon right now moving this team down the field. Just the, the play calling has just been absolutely beautiful. Fifth first down this drive. Jacksonville trying to get in the end zone. Here's Christensen. Fires again. St. Green one-hander. I think St. Green bailed out his quarterback right there because that was going into a whole sea of blue and white jerseys if he didn't come down with that ball. Great, great catch. Um, probably uh, an ill-thrown ball, but either way, it's second and two here from just inside the 10. Four down lineman for Charleston. Give Willis tackled short. It'll be third and one. He's already there, not letting go. Linebacker third and one. If, if you're Jacksonville, I think you have to give it to Willis here. Big set. Have Iggy Swift 
open up a hole for him here. I think this is the way it's going. Single back in the backfield. Here's Christensen. Moves in the pocket. Flips. Iggy Swift. First down catch. And they continue to burn time off this clock using the fullback out of the backfield. Well, I said about Iggy Swift, but not opening a hole, but ends up catching catching the rock for, I think it was just the yard, but exactly what they needed to get. And this is now the, that was the sixth first down of this drive. And they're just eating up yards and more importantly, eating up clock. Charleston could use a miracle. Here's the give Willis. Willis stuffed up the middle. Some type of turnover or forced error would be huge for the Predators. Yeah, a field goal here, even a fifth. Right now they need a turnover. They need to either intercept the pass or try to knock the ball out of it, of horses uh, or Iggy Swift's hands or something. they got to get a turnover. Split back, spread for Christensen. Give Willis. Willis bounces and tackled. It'll be third and goal from the four. I think you got to throw here, Gerald. 17th. Oh, this is going to be the 18th play of the drive. I disagree, Andy, because uh, a field goal puts you up 10 with five something to go. And the way your defense is playing, uh, to me, that ball would not be thrown anywhere. Too many. If you were like back further, yeah. Too many arms around there that could tip that ball. I just run it. Three wide here. Christensen going to throw. Stands in the pocket. Pressure coming. Unloads underneath. Oh, ah. picked right out of his hands. Ken Gossett embarrasses the defender and scores. Unbelievable. That was a pick all day, and he just took it out of the hands of Jack Brown. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. What a drive by the Jacksonville Kings. And probably at the biggest time of the game. And once again, leaning on the experience of all these all this ball club, it's show a way to win. The man who has the third most touchdowns in SFL, third most receiving touchdowns in SFL history, Ken Gossett against a linebacker one-on-one. -on -one with potentially the game on the line. And of course, Gossett's going to win that nine times out of a 99 out of 100 times. He makes the catch there in a one on one situation and gives Jacksonville a 14 point lead. That was, that's one of those killer drives. 18 plays, 86 yards. Just an absolutely big time drive for the Jacksonville Kings. And Charleston will be in trouble, and they will start at their own 18. The SFL broadcast team is looking to add new talent to our ranks of broadcasters. Applications are being accepted now to try out for either the play-by-play -play or analyst position. No prior experience is required, just a love for the game of football and a desire to succeed. The application can be found on our website at simulationfl.net backslash broadcasting. Here we go. Charleston, single back in the backfield, will give to Swearingen. They will take a yard off the right side and go hurry up. Uh, if you're going to go hurry up, you need to throw the football. You're down two scores. You can't afford to run it right now. Here is Drew. Seven-step drop. Flips out Swearingen out of the backfield, and he steps out of bounds right at the line to gain. Pops the clock with 447 to go. Brings up a huge third and nine here. And if you're Charleston, I think this is four down territory because your defense was just on the field a long time with uh, Jacksonville drive. You need to get some need to get some positive yards here. Two scores, the difference. Here is Drew. Drew across the middle, tipped up and almost picked off. That would have been Lamano's fourth if he would have got his hands to it. Bond with the deflection. On Bond. Alex Bond comes up with that great, great play. Brings up fourth and nine here. Here, Charleston, do you go for it? They had the offense out on the field. I would punt, but Charleston is going to go for it here. Two receivers split out. 3-3 three, three look here out of Jacksonville. Ball game on the line. Single back for Drew. Seven-step drop. Fires underneath. Tackled well short of the line, and the Kings take over. 
how do you run a route not to the first down line is beyond me, but Rain Ray just comes up with a big open field tackle. So uh, that was that could be the ball game right there. Jacksonville takes over at the 22 inside a field goal range. If they don't move an inch, they can extend the lead to 17. 4-3 look here out of Charleston. They need a prayer. Give up the middle. Willis will get forward for a yard. Coming up on the SFL postgame show, we'll send you to bonus coverage of Florida and Sioux Falls. Cameron Irvine and Robert Garrett Jr. will preview tonight's and tomorrow's action. It's all coming up on the SFL postgame update. Don't want to go anywhere. Charleston down by 14 with about four minutes to go. Would need a turnover or some type of missed field goal to feel comfortable about trying to get back into this one. Jacksonville in control and trying to take as much time off the clock as they can. Give up the middle. Willis will go backwards. He'll end up losing a yard. As you see, just a host of uh, editors right there. Bring up third and 11. Hits where you're up by two scores. If you want to throw the football here, it wouldn't be a bad decision. You have to, yeah, I call it like a safe pass. I wouldn't call it like a maybe like a slant, maybe just like an out route here. Don't need to really push the ball down the field. You already have the lead. Three receivers wide. Willis, the lone man. 4 2 look here out of Charleston. Jacksonville burning as much time as they can, and they just give to Willis. Smart play there is good for two, and they will kick. Come up there, big tackle there, but Jack Brown, and that will put Jack Brown over 900 for his career. Certainly a lot of tackles out of that man, the cornerstone for Charleston's franchise. They have had some good years and some rough years. Last year they uh, ended up 5-7, and seven, went 8-4 and four the year before that, and then a couple 4-8 and eight seasons on the front side of that, if the result here tonight holds, they would fall to 500. However, still a lot of football to be played. Here is the kick from Anthony Cece. It is up, and Mr. Automatic makes it 23-6, to a 17-point difference. Yeah, and, and this is the game, right? As you see the standings right now, and that game that's up in the corner, that, that Sioux Falls game, really is important here because Huge. The, winner, the winner of this game will be tied with them in record at four and two. I mean, the loser's only going to be a game out of first, so every game right now for the Atlantic Division is important. The only division, as it said, with four teams with winning records, obviously one of these teams will fall to 500. However, uh, not being a losing record is quite an accomplishment in the SFL. Every single game in this league matters, and you don't have to tell either of these two teams how much this game may mean, whether it be tiebreakers or whether it simply be uh, the win on the one side of the column. But yes, that uh, Florida and Sioux Falls game weighing heavily, especially if that result would hold. So Charleston going to have to take some shots here, Gerald. They have to try and get in the end zone a couple of times, and they'll need some help on top of that. Drew, seven-step drop, fires on the corner route. See you later. Buchanan Simons in a foot race, 10-5. Charleston strikes. We've been waiting on it all night, and they finally go over the top. Buchanan Simons, what a touchdown. Huge, huge play. Gets behind the defense. Somehow, somewhere on the double move, they bite, and there's no one behind them. And what a way to get over 5,000 yards for your career right there. Unbelievable play. And guess what? This game isn't over just yet, folks. Just when Charleston made it seem as if they uh, were dead in the water, they come right back out and TD Drew, the T and the D stands for tossing dimes as he fires one over the top to Simons for six. Moyer on to add the extra point, would cut it right back down to a 10-point lead. Kick up and through. It is 10 as the difference. And, Gerald, I think you got to go onside. 
with three timeouts. I'm it's, not it's sure. Two, I... It's two possessions. You got to. Yeah, but if you if you don't get this, it's gonna be a, it's still gonna be a two possession game either way. Kick it deep. Kick is up. It is collected by Jacksonville, and Gerald, I, I still think it's the right call, and here's why. Jacksonville has a short field, right? So if they pick up two first downs, they win the game. But if you stop them right here, you get the ball back with less time off the clock. If you kick it deep, they have all the time to take off in the world. I, I still think it's a right it's the right call. But if but if you have if you kick it deep and you get a three and out, you have all your timeouts plus the two minute warning, you'll have a chance to stop them without gaining any points. Willis out to the 38, and that is where Jacksonville will have second and seven. Hey, sec second and seven, and they're just on field goal range right now for CC. So I think I still think it'll be kicking it. Two minute warning here. Ten points the difference. Charleston trying to claw back into it. Two minutes to play here in Jacksonville, Florida. Andy Hamilton along with Gerald Giudicesi. Rochelle Colston and Tom Rahman on stats. Cameron Irvine producing tonight's game as Jacksonville trying to hold on here. They need to get a first down and finish this one out. But Willis tackled behind the line. They'll bring up third and seven on the outskirts of field goal range. Yeah, definitely on the outskirts of field goal range. If they get another three or four yards, I mean, a first down, First down is basically the ball game. So they need to get a stop here. And if they get like four or five yards, they're definitely in CC's range. Defense buckling down. Offense maybe calling their best seven-yard play. Christensen gives Willis right up the middle. Willis not a yard, and Charleston will take their next time out, and they're going to get the ball back here, Gerald. 55-yard attempt here for CC possibly. Or do you punt it? Do you punt it and pin them deep? Jacksonville's defense has looked good tonight other than the one play. They will send on Howard McCoy to punt this one away. And with 154, Charleston has time, and they have shown that they can do – they they can score. They can get down the field on one play. They have that in their arsenal. Here is the kick. 
It is angled towards the far sideline, and it'll go out of bounds right around the 13. Great, great directional punt there by McCoy. You have a buck 48 left, and you're, you have to at least, if anything, get a field goal on this drive, but you're probably just going to have to try to bomb it deep and hopefully get six. You would need the onside after this no matter what. But you do need a score. You hit it on the head, either a field goal or a touchdown. Quick throw there is incomplete, but a flag comes out. Was trying to find Simons, and that might be pass interference. Let's see if that's pass interference. It's going to stop the clock, and it is. That's a, break, that's a break for Charleston. Foul called there for Jacksonville on Clay Jones, the inside linebacker, usually pretty good in coverage, but there he gets Simons, the... Predators' best receiving threat in coverage and accidentally grabs onto him. It might not be a smart. It might be a smart move after that last play is to put a put a put an arm on him and stop him from going deep. Well, if you're if you're a linebacker, yes. If you are a corner, you probably should uh, try and play him straight up. Twins to the bottom of the screen. Drew in the shotgun. Swearing to his left. Drew stands, delivers across the middle, and it's incomplete. Was trying to find Makaro. Alex Bond there with another pass deflection. Coming back. And boy, I would not want to be TD Drew to have to throw against a secondary of Sprouse, Gooden, Lamano, Bond, Rain Rie. Got uh, linebackers dropping back in coverage. It's going to be tough for TD Drew here uh, with uh, Buck 42 to go. Ace quads on the field again. Single back is Swearingen. Here's Drew to throw. Fires across the middle. That one is incomplete in and out of the hands. Was trying to find Da Vinci, but right there to play defense was Rain Rie. Rain Rie with another great defensive play here. At Jacksonville's defense, except for that one long 78-yard bomb to Buchanan Simons, has been playing absolutely phenomenal all game. Brings up a third and 10. Charleston, four for four, four for 14 on third down. Simons in the slot, two tight ends to the top of the formation. Swearingen in the backfield. Drew, sidearm, caught there by Da Vinci down to the 27. Charleston elects to use their final timeout to set up this fourth and four. I think it's a good call. Definitely. With fourth down four, you don't want to go up there and not have your ducks in a row, so to speak. The big fourth down play here. Basically, the game is on the line right now. Need to pick up the first down. Need to get out to the 32 or further. Empty set. They did score from this set. They fire deep, and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Buchanan Simons. He could not haul it in. He's hurt. That's the game, but he is also down. Yeah, it took a shot right in the ribs. As you saw when he when he leaned over, he just started to grab his ribs. Right there just takes a shot from Bernard Gooden and just just all of a sudden just turned around and held his ribs. So that was a great play to separate the ball from the receiver. You knew he was gonna go to Buchanan Simons, his number one target. Uh so it's gonna be victory formation here for the King. Laid it all on the line, and Buchanan Simons could not come up with the catch, and that will force Charleston to give the ball back to Jacksonville, and the Kings are going to come away with a victory here and move to 4-2 and two and potentially move up in the Atlantic Division. Sioux Falls and Florida still competing. Florida trying to come back and take on Sioux Falls and get another win themselves. 4-3 out of uh, Charleston to end this one, but a victory formation for Jacksonville. They played a full game, Gerald, and Christensen looked pretty good tonight despite the picks. Yeah, despite, despite the picks, he looked really good. And while it was an ugly game, these are the type of games that Jacksonville wins. Uh, going back to the last five seasons, they're only one of two teams other than the Baltimore Vultures to be over 500 in their last five seasons. There's one team also, I believe that's uh, Mexico City, 
that went 500 in one of those seasons. So, but this is why Jacksonville continues to win. They have the experience and they don't make mistakes late in games to lose ball games. Frank Gooden and this staff for Jacksonville picks up their fourth win of the season, a vital one in the Atlantic Division. And they will improve to four and two. Charleston falls to three and three. Definitely not out of the conversation. Jacksonville has to be careful. They could potentially drop a few games if Charleston, you know, stays playing well. They could always come back. Still plenty of SFL action. But Gerald, tonight it was the Kings' night. It was definitely the Kings' night. As you look at that time for the twenty-eight minutes, not a lot of yards. You know, the yards are basically even. It's the turnovers that just lost uh, the game for Carlson. Uh, KD Drew with KD Drew with three interceptions. Christensen with two. Uh, all those turnovers did turn into points, but I think the killer was that 18 play, 86 yard drive, resulting in the touchdown right here to Ken Gossett just taking the ball right out of the hands of Jack Brown, who versus for Charleston, played one heck of a game. Two pass deflections to go along with 16 tackles. Uh, Kevin Simon is leading receiver for Charleston, 93 yards. Costa leading the way with only 66 yards for offense. Jared Willis, 19 carries for 23 yards. It was just a tough fought game the whole way through. One of those games, one of those games where someone passed blue. Unfortunately for Charleston, it was them tonight. Your player of the game is going to be Ken Gossett. Six catches, two touchdowns, 73 yards. Well, for Gerald Giudicesi, I'm Andy Hamilton. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League. Jacksonville gets the win tonight. We will send it back to SFL Studios for analysis. After these messages, stay tuned and thank you.
Welcome back to the SFL Studios. These two games ended simultaneously tonight, and watch this play on third down and one from Sioux Falls. Tyree stretches the ball out beyond the first down line, and Sioux Falls 0-5. That's how they beat 4-1 Florida tonight as we uh, welcome you uh, back into the SFL Studios here. And, uh, man, it was that was... That was some way to end a ball game on a quarterback sneak like that and a huge upset in the SFL here tonight, Robert. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Sioux Falls, uh, a, a lot of people have talked about it. 0-5 headed into this game after being in back-to-back -back championship games and uh, not coming out as the victor in either of those. Uh, so a little bit of a roadblock, but Julian Tyree and the rest of his offense playing like they know how to and are able to ice the game there at the end. They were up 24-7 after they gave up a touchdown on the first play of that game and then held Florida to three straight field goals. Florida never got the ball back. Just a, just a wild win for Sioux Falls. Uh, here on 11 Sports tonight, a big victory for Jacksonville uh, down the stretch. They get the win and improve to 4-2. and two. Charleston now in last place of the division, which is shocking at 3-3, three and three, the final score there. Uh, Jacksonville beating Charleston 23-13. to 13. Um, I, I thought that the telling thing of this game, Robert, was that 18-play drive. It defined how Jacksonville is winning games this season, and it defined this football game. They did everything they could to keep Charleston's offense off the field. Yeah, Jacksonville just uh, chipped their way down the field, got little passes here and there. Christian Christensen, 38 completions of 51 attempts. He averaged about five yards for each of those throws. So uh, just very carefully moving down the field and picking their chances where they could get them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, coming up uh, here tonight on uh, around the SFL's family of networks on the For the Fans Twitch channel, that's twitch.tv slash FTF next You'll, you can see the Tulsa Desperados take on the D.C. Dragons on the SFL's Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash simulationfl. You can see the Fort Worth Toros take on the San Diego Mavericks. And then tomorrow on For the Fans, uh, we've got a good block for you. It all starts at 6 p.m. Eastern as St. Louis takes on London. Fish and chips and ribs and all sorts of rivalries. L.A. Queen City, Atlanta, Carolina, Houston, Denver. Also... A part of that slate, uh, Robert, in 30 seconds, uh, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? Yeah, definitely looking forward to London at St. Louis. St. Louis obviously undefeated so far on this season. And, uh, you know, this was already a pretty big rivalry game between the two teams. Jeff Gagne playing the first game since the passing of his mother, and they will be wearing special uh, tribute uniforms in that ball game. And uh, we wish uh, Jeff, our former director of digital content, all the all the best and his family. For that, that's it. That's a wrap. Jacksonville wins 23-13. Sioux Falls upsets Florida 24-16. For Robert Garrett Jr., I'm Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League. And you've been watching the SFL on 11 Sports. Until next Saturday, good night, everybody.